Hey everyone, I wanted to do a video on gear that I've found um, that you might not have seen before or um, and you might find useful and want to bring with you. So I've got a big pile here next to me. Um, I'm just going to pull them one at a time and, and go through it. And as I do, I'm not going to spend as much time giving a real in-depth uh, review of the item. Um, I'm not going to include the much of the specs or price or any of that, um, I'll include links in the description below. And if you're interested in any of it, then you can click there and follow the link and uh, purchase one for yourself. So, hats. Uh, I was looking into hats and as part of that, I also had to think about flashlights. And I know that seems weird, but the reason for that is that uh, I used to always wear a baseball cap when I'd go hiking and with a baseball cap I liked to be able to snap on a flashlight and I wanted to look at hats that could could snap on a flashlight but also provide some shade for my ears and things um, and and there weren't any until I discovered this hat which is a shelter hat it has this stiff brim and this is multi-purpose because it can withstand winds, extremely strong winds. It doesn't flop in your face or blow up or down. You can get it wet or even submerse it in water and pull it out and it doesn't flop. So it's rigid along the front, the brim. And I really like that. Um, just to kind of show a little of the hat, it's got straps that you can either clip out of the way behind your neck or if you want to use them, you can unclip it and cinch it down around your chin. It's got a little storage pocket in the top. Um, so yeah, good. oh, it's got uh, items on the sides to kind of tighten and cinch it down, or I'm sorry, in the back as well. So good hat. Now, what I was talking about with flashlights is I like wearing the hat when I'm camping, but at nighttime I, I like to continue to wear the hat. I didn't want to take off the hat to put on a um, headlamp. And most backpacking and camping headlamps, you know, you, they strap around your head. Um, and so I was looking into if there was any alternatives to that and I came across this light and it's a cap on light. This thing's amazing. So it only weighs I think 29 grams which is very comparable to some of the backpacking headlamps. Um, it's USB rechargeable. It has three light modes so it's got a lantern mode. It's got a uh, spotlight mode out the front and it's got a red light mode, which is also very cool. And in each of the modes, you can click and hold and you can adjust the brightness up and down on all three of the light modes. Um, in addition to that, the, the clip on it is adjustable. So you can clip this, I clip it on that hat, on the, that stiff brim on the front of the hat, but you could also clip it to your backpacking strap, you could clip it in your tent when you're cooking or something and you just want the lantern, you can kick it out like a kickstand. So very cool little light. Okay, sticking with electronics. Um, I know some people like just the sounds of nature and if you are one of those, I, I, I that's, that's fine. And I do as well, but once in a while, as I'm around the campfire or sitting uh, fishing or, or, or while I'm backpacking, I do like some music. And so I looked into lightweight speakers and I wanted to find something that gave the, the perfect sweet spot of how much it weighed versus the quality of the sound. And this is the speaker that I came up with. Um, I don't even remember the exact brand, but um, I will include a link in the description, USB chargeable, I think it lasts four hours, six hours, something like that. So I mean, it won't last to a, a extremely long time, but if you just are doing something, want a little music while you're sitting around the campfire, um, or like I said, fishing, there you go. Okay, another electronic. So. Um, I saw someone else have this idea and I thought I, I agreed. I thought it was a good idea. It's a little thermometer. And now this isn't the one that I would actually recommend. Since I purchased this one, Thermoworks, which is a company I, I like, came out with one that's a little bit lighter, a little bit better. Um, I like theirs. But 
This one works just fine for me now, but the, the purpose of a thermometer is um, kind of helps you dial in your gear. Uh, so based on, it, it'll keep track of a high and low over a 24 hour period. So you can wake up in the morning and see how cold it was at night. And so you can tell, you know, did was my was I cold? Were my layers enough? Was I hot? And and reference the temperature. Um, so just kind of a good good piece of kit to have. Okay. Um, let's talk about some something fun. Uh, so I've been on some backpacking trips when unfortunately the weather isn't what you what you want, what you hope for, and it's raining the whole time. And on some of those trips, we've been in our tents um, and we played we played cards. Someone had a deck of cards and we played a lot of different card games. And as I was wondering, is there any weight savings to be found in playing cards? Well, yes, yes there are. <laughs> so this is a deck of cards, but it's called an air deck. And it's, it's basically the same height, I think, as a traditional deck, but it's like half the width and half the weight. Um, so if you're in your tent, with some with some friends or even if you're alone want to play some solitaire there's some playing cards okay um let's see here another thing i found is that uh, i enjoy bushcraft and knots and and kind of being outdoors and knowledgeable but to say that i can remember the the various knots um i can't and i'd be surprised if most people can that, that aren't doing it on a day-to-day -day basis using those so I found a little little plastic kit of, of its cards that are referencing camping and backpacking knots now if you don't even want the weight of this but you do take your phone with you backpacking then you could also snap pictures of this or it's an idea to save um, the, the pictures and, and then reference them as you're sitting in, in camp and want to practice tying some knots. Uh, I'm fidgety and I like keeping my hands busy and so that kind of stuff um, really appeals to me because I, I can't just sit there I need to be kind of doing something. And so let's let's talk more about that. Um, I now I purchased this Puko knife which is specifically made for carving. I think it only weighs about three ounces. It um, has a Scandi grind, and it's just, so far I've, I've really liked it um, with what little I've used it. And um, so that will be the, the only knife I'll be taking with me. I'll no longer carry like a pocket knife. I'll just bring this knife along with me. Um, and then I'll also bring a little hook knife, which can be used to carve out the um, kind of bowl part of a spoon and it's just something that uh, that I'm interested in and getting so I'm gonna actually look into and find um, actually I'll probably cut them myself walnut or, or different varieties of wood and it's easier to carve when it's green so I'll cut a little block and kind of minimize the size and you want to wrap that in a Ziploc bag and keep it moist so that it's easier to carve and I'm just gonna bring that with me on the trail and sit around the campfire at night and I can listen to my music and I can carve a spoon. So um, I guess we'll stick with that wood theme for a minute and something that, that I've found very useful is bringing a saw to help in gathering firewood. Now this is a silky saw, that's a gomboy. This one's a little larger than actually what I would recommend for backpacking um, and I will uh, link maybe a, a slightly smaller version than this one. I think this one's the 270 millimeter and I'd probably recommend like the 210. Um, but that's something that, that I've found very useful in backpacking and gathering firewood and, and enjoying a fire while I'm out on the trail. Um, an alternative to a saw would be if you, if you do enjoy carving and, and this goes right along with the spoon theme is that if you want to do any crafting or wood carving you could bring like a little hatchet instead of a saw. Okay. All right, moving on to some other random things. Um, as you're sitting around your campfire or in camp and your muscles are sore, 
Um, something that I've decided to bring is a little cork ball. Now this can be pushed and, and rubbed on, on your muscles, on your calves, on your uh, ankles, or, or not your ankles, your the balls of your feet, um, and just any, your quads, any, any muscles that are sore, a little massage ball. It actually works very well to, to work out those sore muscles and maybe help them recover and, and be good for the next uh, stretch of trail. Okay, chapstick. Like you're like, why are you talking about chapstick? It's because I've carried chapstick, not hiking, but I, I bring it hiking, but in my pocket for years. And one of my pet peeves is that traditional shaped chapstick once a year, twice a year, you'll stick your hand in your pocket and you'll be like, ugh, and your hand is covered in gooey chapstick. And it's because the, the, the twist knob has twisted, popped off the lid, you've got chapstick all over and everything, anything else that was in your pocket is covered in chapstick. So I found these O'Keefe's uh, chapstick that the shape is, is not it's not a circle you know you can see there and based on how they've, they've put these I guess edges on it and then your twist there in the middle I have never yet been carrying these for for several years and it's never twisted and popped and in, in my pocket so good good thing to think about with your chaps what do we got here? Let's do, let's talk about some 3D printed stuff. So on Thingiverse, um, I found I was searching for gear. I don't have a 3D printer. Um, my dad does and siblings. And I had them print some stuff for me. And if, if you don't know anyone with a 3D printer and you're interested in some of this gear, let me know and, and my family would be happy to print it up and ship it to you. So I'm, I've got my sat nav device, right? And the clip that came with it, it's kind of bulky. It's like a two-piece thing. I don't like it. It's heavier. It sticks out. And someone on Thingiverse, uh, and if you don't know what Thingiverse is, it's, it's kind of a um, community board or website portal for sharing um, plans that you can then download and 3D print items. And so someone designed a little clip for my satellite communicator. I really like that more than the one that came with it. Um, another thing is that you can buy these, but there's also good plans to print them. My dad thought it'd be fun and he made this out of glow in the dark plastic. But what this is, is it's the little stand that you can then open up and you clamp on your fuel canisters. And I, I actually have another one of these that I purchased that was bought at the store and I prefer the 3d printed version over that other one so okay another fun thing you can 3d print is little you know for spices I did salt and pepper but I put some salt and pepper in there barely weighs anything 3d printed you can unscrew each side and you can have some spices Let's keep talking about spices. Um, another thing you might not have thought of is that you can, many of the more popular spices that, that you enjoy, you can get in little um, individual packets. And so here's some tajin. That are, they're like these little individual packets, don't weigh anything, I've thrown them in there. If you're doing some food and uh, it's kind of bland and you want to spice it up, shake in some tajin. And uh, you're good to go. It's gourmet. Okay, let's see. Um, pocket shower. So for many years, as I was a teenager, um, our bathing in while backpacking would either be jumping in a freezing cold lake and uh, get your blood going and kind of soap down and, and wash that way with, with a biodegradable, you know, environmentally friendly soap. Or um, sometimes if we had a little more time, we would... Uh, my dad would bring a gallon can and he'd uh, heat water on it and he'd dump it into like a, I think it was a two and a half gallon bag that with a spout on it that he'd hang in a tree and you'd stand underneath it and you'd use it like a shower. Um, I no longer want to take or bring with me that gallon can and I was looking for alternatives, but a similar concept to taking a shower and I found this Sea to Summit pocket shower. It's 10 liters. It's black. 
the material, it's like a black plastic, with the intent that you fill it with water and leave it in the sun and let the sun heat it up. Now, how well that works, I guess, varies, but um, you could also follow something similar if you just needed to, to heat a little bit of water on your camp stove. You could heat it up and dump it in there if you want it warm, but you can hang it in a tree. It's got a little spout to turn on and off. You can soap down and uh, take a little shower. And actually, after you know a day or two of hiking and sweating, if you're in, in a hot um, area, feeling clean and refreshed can actually be very nice. So I'm going to bring a shower with me. Okay, what else? A Oh, for, I guess, on that theme of showering, a towel. So Sea to Summit also makes what's called an air light towel. This thing weighs nothing. Uh, it's so light. And it's got its own little ditty bag. You can open it up and you can see the material in there. But it's I can use this to both dry off after I've showered or um, I have a single walled tent and so in my tent I, it does build up a little bit of condensation. I can use it to wipe any excess condensation in the morning and, and let it dry out a little better before I pack it up and get back on the trail. And okay, what else here? We're making good progress. Um, so if you haven't ever seen these, these are the brand I got is Big otter they're towelettes now they're towelettes that are, are compressed and it's really a little in a, it's like a little tablet there so these are cool you get them you get some water you dump them on them and they'll like it's kind of like the, the the firework worms that you light where it's like a little black tablet and all of a sudden it's like growing it's like that but a towel so it, it expands and turns into a towel and, and it's actually, it's way stronger than like a paper towel. Like it's, it's, it's pretty robust and you could then use this for whatever towelet cleaning needs you, you have. You know, your body, gear, whatever. You get whatever you need to wipe down. It like makes a little portable washcloth in your face. Um, so those are really cool and they weigh nothing and you're also not packing any you know, the size or weight of towelettes that are that are already pre-moistened. Okay. All right, we're going to talk about water purification. I do have like a Sawyer squeeze that I bring. Um, or if you've got a Catadine, be free. But I like to bring a backup just in case. And so there's a website I found that sells these little bottles and I'll link them below and you can choose the size and the reason for that is that when I bought the water for purification the, the containers that it comes in are quite large larger than you need by far and, and this would be enough to filter water for a month or more even in these little bottles that I that I brought with me so I bring along a backup but I've re repurposed it in, in smaller containers Okay, what do we got? So a hammock. Um, I did some research and there are three or four different manufacturers of hammocks that they're all similar in weight. Uh, the one I went with is the Single Hammock Plus by Hummingbird Hammocks. And I think it's five or six ounces or something, but it's the plus means it's the larger, oh, I'm looking at the weight, 7.6 ounces. The larger the, the plus means it's actually a little bit wider and bigger. They make one that's even smaller and lighter than this. Um, along with that, I bought their tree straps that are one and a half ounces to attach it to the tree. Those are the hummingbird hammocks. Um, yeah, tree straps. So I'm excited to, to use those and, and be able to relax in a hammock while I'm out on the trail as well. Okay, let's do talk a little bit about some cooking stuff. So. You can find, um, you know, the titanium spoons and things that are that are lightweight, and I found uh, these wooden spoons that I think are actually even lighter than the titanium ones. It's super tough and strong, and it, it comes with a fork if you even want to bring a fork. It's long, so if you need to reach it down into the bottom of like your freeze dried meals, um, it's long enough to do that, and if you're carving wooden spoons, you can use it as a kind of guide if you're trying to make something similar. 
Um, and then the fork as well, optional. I, I usually don't take the fork, I actually just take the spoon. But good alternative. Um, and uh, yeah, I like eating out of the wooden spoon instead of the, the metal. While I'm out on the trail, it just feels like more natural. <laughs> okay. So, cooking. Um, I bought a kit. And I'm just going to... I guess I'll just briefly kind of show this. So, this is kind of a copycat of some of the other uh, brands out there. But the way they've designed it with these fins, um, it makes it... It can boil water in less than two minutes. Um, it's fast, it's very fast. And I think I've got the Windmaster uh, stove with it and a uh, fuel canister in there. But that is, is a good alternative to some of those name brand um, pots at a fraction of the cost. And I don't think the weight was that bad either. I, I was okay with a little more weight with the added benefit of the faster boiling times because then I'm not carrying as much fuel and my, and my fuel last longer that way so um, I'll put a link to that Back in. okay oh, another thing with cooking is that I did a little test and I took some boiling water and I dumped it in one of the the it was actually a Ziploc bag and not a Mylar bag and the reason I did that is because I'm thinking of dumping my meals from my mylar bags into uh, freezer ziploc bags and they just they they're lighter but it's not really the weight it's more of the space savings as far as compressing the mylar bags aren't really very bendable or foldable and so i kind of want to be able to pack more efficiently with the ziploc freezer bags and i'm going to dump the boiling water in there now with that being said i dumped boiling water in a ziploc bag and i waited 10 or 15 minutes and I took the temperature and then I also dumped the same amount of boiling water in a Ziploc bag and I dumped it in my homemade cozy and took the temperature and this weighs nothing I made this there's videos out on on YouTube of how to make these out of a uh, sunscreen for your car so I took the temperature and I think I think the temperature on, in the bag that was outside of the cozy was like after 10 or 15 minutes was 115, 20 degrees. And the temperature in the cozy was 180 something degrees. So it was, to me it was like an obvious uh, benefit of, of just keeping that food hot longer while it's rehydrating. So cut, make, make yourself a cozy. Okay, next, I guess we'll kind of stick with the food. Now this I'm just gonna briefly mention and then if it's something you want me to go into more detail to about, please mention it in the comments and I'll make another video. But I did a bear hang bag. Now, I made my own. So the bag I got off Amazon, I think it's like a 20 liter waterproof. And this is for hanging in the trees, obviously. But what I did is a lot of people, when they bear hang, it's based off of uh, a technique and, and hiking areas where the trees have limbs that you can hang, throw something over the limb, and you can get that four to six feet away from the trunk of the tree that's recommended, and the 12 feet in the air, or however high. Where I hike is in primarily is, is in the western U.S. in the high elevation where there there aren't that type of trees. It's, it's typically pine trees that don't have those limbs um, sticking clear out. And so you have to, I found very little information and I finally found a guy that uh, I'll, um, I think it's Delaney. I don't remember his last name. He has a YouTube video and he walks you through his bear kit and I just in, in many ways copied it. I, I made some slight changes. But we use zip it line, some S beaners, a little ring, and in his method, you actually use multiple trees and you hang, can then hang your bag out in the middle so that it's away from the trunk, you know, because if you just use a single pine tree, a bear could go up there and get it. Um, and it also only weighs, the whole kit only weighs like three ounces. So uh, good stuff. Let me know if you want a video detailing that, maybe even showing how to do it. 
bear back. And I guess another reason I wanted to do the bear bag is because the canisters are heavy, they're smaller, I guess it limits the, your food considerations. I wanted to be able to not have to worry about the weight, not have to worry about the size, and just be able to hang my food. Okay. All right, we're, we're wrapping up here. We're not wrapping up, we're getting close. Okay, bag liners, if you haven't, you can use trash compactor bags, or um, I did find a good site that has these pack liners. It's like a it's nylo flume, super light, completely waterproof. I think this is for like a, a 60 liter pack. Um, I'll leave a link to those, but they're great to just put on the inside of your pack and have your gear sit in it, just as that extra layer of, of protection and waterproofing if you happen to get wet or caught in a storm or anything like that. Okay, um, pooper scooper. So a lot of people like um, drawing a blank. There's a, there's a certain scoop out there that everyone uses. I found it the edges to be kind of thinner and flimsier and not as robust. And this weighs about the same, but it's like a, the design and it's thicker and then they put a little beveled edge on it for digging. So I liked that one more than, than some of the other mainstream ones out there. I'll leave a link to that. Okay, first aid kit. So what's, uh, again, similar to the uh, bear hang kit. If you are interested in this and, and want me to do a separate video, let me know in the comments. But many people out there recommend just the commercial you know, here's the here's your first aid kit and you buy it and you take that and while that's okay it had some things that I think aren't necessary and it had other things that I think were were missing so I kind of combined the things I liked from various first aid kits and I created my own first aid kit and uh, let me know if you want to know what's in there okay with with hygiene okay so toothpaste you know there's there's many opinions on whether you should mess with that while you're camping personally i do like to brush my teeth um, a, an option in in saving some weight are these little pills there now those are toothpaste pills with fluoride and you get them wet and it kind of turns into a paste and you can brush your teeth with it and you can, rather than bringing a tube and trying to guess how much toothpaste you're going to need for your week-long trip or five-day trip, you can just count out the tablets and, and know exactly that you'll have just the right amount. Um, and then I found, I think I, when I took a flight, an international flight at one point, they gave out these little toothbrushes. It's got a little cap on it. Um, it's, it's very small, very minimalistic, lightweight. So that's my backpacking toothbrush. Okay, on an... Similar notes, I'm gonna try these. I haven't used them yet, uh, but I found them interesting. And it is, we'll flip it this way, deodorant wipes. Now, people claim that you, they go to the gym and things with these, and then afterwards, um, if they're going back to work, like if they're going during their, during their lunch break, they just wipe down with it. And they say these work fantastic to kind of clean up body odor and, and refresh. And, and so I am bringing that uh, shower that I talked about, but if there, for whatever reason, or, or days or times when I, I'm not able to, to shower, I've got an alternative here to kind of wipe and clean yourself up even before you climb in your sleeping bag or go to bed. So I'm gonna try those out. All right, on the topic of, I guess still with soap, so I, I'm gonna try something a little different. Um, I've used camp suds and things before, but I found someone selling the, a powdered soap. Um, and you can just dump a little bit in, you, in your hand, in your pot, and whatever you need to soap up and clean. Um, it's very light. And uh, so that's, that's something, I'll leave a link again to all this in, in the description. Powdered soap. Okay, for my cup and measuring, um, Mini pot, my pot does have marks on it to measure, but I also wanted to bring something, not only to measure, but um, with my water filtration, 
I do have uh, one of the bags that completely opens up and you can scoop with, but there are times when it's handy to have something that you can even smaller or more flexible to scoop water with and then dump in for water filtration. And at the same time, I can use it uh, for measuring water um, for cooking. And I've put marks on there, cup marks. This came from a carbonated drink from Walmart. It was like 50 cents. And uh, so there's that. Okay, last few things here is deodorant. I know you can buy the travel sized ones. I wanted something even smaller. Um, so I purchased, and actually in, in conjunction with that, we'll show this. So this was a sunblock two pack. And that is the sunblock that I'm gonna take and be able to have it for myself and my kids. And the second one from that, I emptied out and then I took some of my deodorant and microwaved it and dumped it in there and let it cool. And now I've got one stick of deodorant. That's really small, lightweight. Got my sunblock. And then bug repellent. Um, many times you can only find larger, uh, excessively large things of, of bug repellent. Now, I'm bringing enough for myself and kids. And so I did need a, kind of an in-between size, but I did find this two ounce of Picardin and it's, I guess, a smaller size. A lot of times these are bigger and you could always put it in another container, another bottle, like I showed with the water purification. And then is even an alternate or these little this is only uh, half an ounce um, of DEET that you can also bring as well. Okay, we are on the last thing. And this is another one where if you want me to make another video, let me know. But fishing, I enjoy fishing from those high alpine lakes. And uh, I don't plan meals around the fish, but once in a while it's, it's even fun to bring some tin foil and seasoning and, and fillet a fish and eat it. So on that note, if you want me to talk about, you know, the lightweight reels or why I chose that reel or the rod I chose, which I don't bring this container, it's too heavy, but I do bring a little four piece rod that snaps together and, or if you've got a telescopic rod, I can talk about that in another video. Um, tip is that you can get these tubes from Home Depot. They're normally long, meant to, to be containers for fluorescent lights. You can cut them, it weighs nothing, and then you can put your rod sections in there, or your telescopic rod, and kind of give it a little protection in your pack. Okay. An other thing to talk about if you're, you want to fillet your fish, a little lightweight cutting board to, to just help you in that process and some little tweezers that I bring for helping with hook removal while I'm fishing and finally I could talk about filleting fish but you, you saw that I bring that puko knife for carving and I said that's my only knife well that's not true I also bring a lightweight fillet knife now this thing has uh, blades that are replaceable so you can it weighs nothing and it's folding. So very cool for, for, for your fishing activities and filleting up some fish on the trail. That is everything I have for you guys. If you want me to make a video about the fishing, let me know. About the bear hang, let me know. About the first aid kit, let me know. Um, this is the first video I've done, so I'm not quite sure what type of response I'll have and if anyone will wanna see more, but if you do, I'll, I'll be happy to, to make a few more videos. Take care, guys. I'll see you on the trail.